Before we get started, we want to warn you. We're talking about gun violence in this episode. It includes images and 911 calls from the Parkland school shooting. So if that is something that you are not in the right headspace for right now, this is your heads up. Okay, here's the episode. Attention all units, possible shots fired at 5901 Pine Island Road at Stoneman Douglas High School. They're like, just run, just leave. And I, uh, as a 14 year old, I just started running. I think we got Four years have passed since a school shooter killed 17 people in Parkland. But we've uncovered Florida schools have been slow to comply with a law passed in its wake meant to help prevent future school shootings. It has happened before and it can happen again. Fewer than half the employees at schools here in the Tampa Bay area have gotten training required by law to help them identify troubled students. Is COVID an excuse? No, I definitely don't think COVID is an excuse. What we found has already prompted law lawmakers to take action. I'm glad you guys were able to show us exactly what was going on. Let's see what's brewing. Hi, I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, welcome to our caffeine-fueled deep dive into issues that matter to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Memories of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting play on repeat in Isabella Benjamia's mind. She can't forget what she saw, but more than anything, she remembers what she heard. The noises I heard, the sounds, the people screaming, um, the gunshots, obviously. The, the fire alarm. She took this selfie in the car before heading into school on Valentine's Day 2018 a final moment of her childhood innocence frozen in time. Hello, we're at Stoneman Douglas High School and I think there's a shooter. I was in my English class. We were writing Valentine's Day cards because we were reading Romeo and Juliet. When did you first realize something was wrong? When I heard this really loud noise in the hallway. Okay, is the door locked? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they getting closer to you? Yeah. When we left, um, you know, the officers tried telling us not to look down, not to look around us, but it was kind of impossible. And so we saw, like, I saw, like, blood, like, you know, all these bodies. They're like, just run, just leave. And I, I as a 14-year-old, I, I just started running. I feel like I was in a horror movie. A former student with a history of mental illness killed 17 people. I had a friend who passed. Um, she was my first friend in Douglas. I had just seen her a period before that. And what was her name? Alyssa, Alyssa al -Hadev. So what if the next school shooting doesn't have to happen because a school employee is able to hit pause before it's too late? Fast forward to March 2018, when Florida passed a bunch of new school safety requirements in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act. That law included the pause button. All school employees had to get youth mental health awareness and assistance training. <laughs> training that teaches them how to identify the signs of emotional disturbance, mental illness, and substance abuse, and how to engage with that student and connect them to the help they need. We learn what questions to ask, what steps to take next if we have concerns. And you know what, may potentially avert a crisis or a situation that we don't want our students to have to struggle with. Do you think this training could help prevent the next school shooting? Quite possibly, absolutely. But that law doesn't include a deadline. So in January, we asked our 10 school districts in the Tampa Bay area for the number of their employees who have actually gotten this legally required training. And we found nearly four years after the law was passed, most of our school districts had fewer than half of their employees trained. Hillsborough, Sarasota, Pinellas, Polk, Pasco, and Hernando County school districts were all under 50% as of January. In Hernando County, only 8% of their employees had gotten this training. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel angry. I feel like teachers have to be more aware of who they're teaching. You know, like, you know, like it's our second home. There were signs from the shooter before this happened. There were cases of suicide after this shooting, and it's so sad that you know, they couldn't get the help they needed. I feel like as teachers, they should 
do their part to help these kids. If this training is so important, why have only 30% of the employees here at Sarasota County Schools been trained? So the training is super important and Everybody who works in Sarasota wants to engage in the training. I think the time constraints are one thing. I think that the competing priorities are another thing. I think that having um, so few trainers in large districts, it's very difficult to make progress towards training each person. Um, I think the time required to take the course, six hour investment of time is another factor. There are two ways to complete the Youth Mental Health First Aid program. One is a six-hour in-person training. The second is a two-part format, a hybrid of self-paced study and live virtual instruction. What were some of the ways they know that they needed help? Sarasota County Schools allowed me to sit in on one of their live virtual trainings. As a mental health first aider, it is not about giving advice, but rather giving hope to someone who may be feeling Hopeless. The Florida Department of Education tells us the class size for live training is capped at 30 people. And school districts tell us that class size can be a challenge when you have thousands of employees. It's going to take a long time to reach every single person who works, who works within the district. Is COVID an excuse? No, I definitely don't think COVID is an excuse, but I can tell you this, we had a lot of competing priorities during COVID. Sarasota County Schools have recently started offering the training after school and on weekends to help speed up the process. The biggest thing I try to avoid as an investigative reporter is bringing you a problem with no answers. So I brought what we found to lawmakers weeks ago. I'm glad you guys were able to show us exactly what was going on. Uh, because sometimes you pass laws and you expect uh, the districts to follow it, but sometimes they don't. After seeing what we found, Florida Senate Education Committee Chair Joe Gruders added an amendment to his school safety bill that creates a deadline. It would require every school district in the state to notify the Department of Education that at least 80% of school employees have gotten that mental health training by July 1st, 2023, and every year after that. The state legislature passed the bill and it's waiting on the governor's signature. I just wanna say thank you for bringing this to our attention. Without the uh, this investigation, uh, uh, we wanna be aware of the non-compliance that's happening in our school districts. When is this gonna stop? Isabella Benjamia goes to school to learn, but now she wants schools to learn something from her. Learn from past mistakes, learn from these situations and require these trainings so they can do their part. Two days after the shooting, Benjamia wrote down seven pages about her experiences and feelings. She allowed us to record her reading a part of what she wrote, and it is really powerful. If you want to see it, you can find a link to it in the episode description below. Thanks for watching What's Brewing. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and I'll see you next time.